Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earth Master back here on this wonderful uh, Wednesday night, right? Wednesday, November 29th, 2023. Sometimes I don't even know what day it is. The day's going by pretty quick lately. November 29th, 2023, uh, 1025 p.m. here, California time. Latest activity is a 2.3 earthquake on the big island of Hawaii. We'll go ahead and check that out here in just a minute. First, we want to jump into the space weather activity. Now, we do have a couple CMEs headed in the Earth direction. Earth being uh, roughly within this little region right here, that little green dot is going to be the Earth position. Now, notice um, on a couple of these models here, you'll see at least one CME being blasted off, followed up by a couple smaller ones, and then a larger event to potentially combine into a much stronger system uh far as a much stronger cme impact so still waiting on this uh, i was just looking at the real-time solar wind stream i do not see any signs of any uh first arrival uh in terms of the uh you know the, the first cme uh so we're not looking at anything coming in yet although it is somewhat forecasted potentially for tonight i don't see it yet it has not come in uh, just very minimal conditions up there across the polar regions in terms of the auroras currently. But we are looking at a G3 class storm. Now this is definitely, uh, could be a, a very viewable event pending you have clear skies. Now this is going to take place roughly tomorrow evening between the 6, it uh, looks like it comes in roughly between uh, 0 and 600 tomorrow UTC time. Uh, current UTC time is uh, the 30th, so it could come in um, about as soon as it gets dark tomorrow, and the potential lasts there all night. Uh, so that's what they're stating right here on the UTC time, G3 class storming. Right now, you know, we're, we're expecting the arrival of the first one, but uh, I, I just don't see it yet unless it completely missed us, uh, but we'll have to wait and see. Either way, G3 class storming possibilities coming up here uh for tomorrow definitely keep an eye on that uh let's see what else we got here in terms of the watches i'm not interested in that uh current kp index right here very low uh when a cme does hit us we'll obviously see that get elevated and it could be up to the kp index of of uh, seven or so uh, with that G3 class storming right here is the uh, category. I don't think we'll see G4. Um, we'd take probably a much more uh, powerful CME, but either way, we have potential for the G3 storming coming up here uh, tomorrow night. Continue to watch that and uh, see how this plays out. Kind of interesting here. All right, uh, let's go back here to the Space Weather Solar Ham site. Uh, there is the forecast here. Uh, again, the main potential tomorrow night. It looks like that could linger into the second time frame or the uh, UTC time on the December 2nd. Um, I just had a dimming here. Make sure we're still live. Been getting some weird stuff going on here lately on my end once again. But uh, tr try not to discuss it too much here. All right. So we are looking at 3,500 here. A pretty large sunspot region that uh, is drifting slowly over here across the western limb of the sun. It will be uh, much further here in the coming days. It does still harbor some potential for some flaring. It does have uh, quite a few dynamic setups here within the core of that sunspot and uh, what's coming around it or coming behind it. Not a whole lot. There is some sunspot regions, but none of these look uh, all that complex. Uh, so we'll, we'll hope for the best and maybe things will change with these newer sunspots, but right now I don't think so with those. Um, let's see. All right. Uh, let's get into earthquake activity. See if anything major is going on out here. Uh, of course, whenever we do get hit with some uh, large CMEs, it does affect the earth. Uh, and a good percentage of the time we do see some elevated earthquake activity once those CMEs uh, affect the uh, the planet there by slamming into the uh, geomagnetic field. And uh, it does create a little strain out here amongst the plates. We see it quite often, so we'll kind of see how this plays out in the next couple days. Big Island of Hawaii still seeing some movement. Uh, one earthquake up here north of Kilauea Volcano. That's a pretty deep one. 
about 30 kilometers deep or so and a 2.3 uh, a little bit further south now these guys are still seeing some elevated inflation activity there across the Kilauea volcano and uh, I'm just not for sure when it's going to be able to break through or when it's going to erupt but uh, things are definitely uh, on the uptick here in terms of inflation here's the past two days still seeing that uh, gradual inflation peaking up there the the highest it's been in uh, oh, about five years or so. So things are definitely brewing up here uh, in the uh, Kilauea volcano region. Uh, again, it's just uh, one of those things. Just got to watch it and see uh, how it plays out. But I think the longer we see this sit and continue to swell, the, the more likely that this will be uh, kind of a, an interesting eruption to see where it, uh, where it takes place here. All right, uh, what else we got here? California was rocking and rolling a little bit earlier this morning and some this afternoon. We did have one earthquake just off the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault here around Banning area, eight kilometers deep for a 3.2. A couple other earthquakes down here as well along the San Jacinto Fault zone. That has since kind of died off, uh, but still keep an eye on this region. It has been showing some elevated activity here recently. Uh, after uh, quite a few weeks of very quiet conditions. Uh, one earthquake out here in the Blanco Fracture Zone. That was from earlier this morning. Uh, doesn't look like we're seeing anything major going on here across the Cascadia for now. A look at the Cascadia Trimmer shows us 86 epicenters of Trimmer. Not that big of a deal. It's all kind of scattered. Uh, really, the last uh, year or so has been fairly quiet in terms of uh, elevated trimmer activity not for sure quite what that means um, but we did see uh, I would say roughly to about the well 2020 all the way up to let's say maybe 2022 or so probably maybe even further back than that we did see quite a bit of regular intervals of elevated trimmer activity on a on a kind of a time frame here you can see them up here on the chart and um, it, la it seemed like it lasted for a few years or so. Uh, but now we're starting to dip back down into just uh, some very minimal trimmer. But I've noticed here when we do get trimmer, uh, it, tends to, it tends to kick more earthquake activity up here towards the surface region, up towards the uh, Cascadia. So I'm thinking things are pretty well locked and loaded out here across this area. Uh, again, one of those regions here. We'll just have to see what happens. A couple five or fives, no, a couple small microquakes, 0.5, out here around Yellowstone area. I really don't think we got anything major going on there. Let me check the um, overview. See a handful of earthquakes here around Mary Lake, and there's a handful of earthquakes here across this seismograph station as well. These look like, um, well, let's see, or those are. Uh, Maybe some earthquakes around Idaho, it looks like. Did we have anything up there? A little bit further away. Maybe even down into Utah. I don't know, but uh, they don't look localized here to Yellowstone as far as these three little dots go. All right, uh, what else we got here? Anything major going on across the rest of the states? It doesn't look like it. Uh, Texas still rocking out here outside of Pecos, Texas. And uh, one little small lonesome earthquake out there from last night in the South Carolina region. Handful of earthquakes around the Puerto Rico Trench as well. Nothing elevated. In fact, if you look at the model right now, if you look at the globe, let's bring this up here. Most of the earthquake activity is, uh, well, there's a little bit of new movement here across the Papua New Guinea area. Quite a few fours and fives stirring up down there. Uh, USGS showing a little bit. They're on top of each other here. Uh, but that's within the last couple hours or so. Definitely seen... Uh, somewhat of an elevated activity event there new zealand still seeing some twos and threes well maybe a couple threes down there uh one deep earthquake it looks like a 3.2 uh into that area of north island 135 kilometers deep or so that is pretty what's going on over here <laughs> it's a little weird that's not supposed to look like that but uh so no major event activity going on right now. I think if a, an area we, we want to watch is uh, this tremendous amount of uh, a lot of small microquake activity up here across the Java Trench northward. That seems to be where all the activity wants to get cluttered right now. 
Uh, looks like Australia did see a 3.1 earlier today as well. So things are a little uh, tight and strenuous up here in terms of the plate stress amongst this region. That's also shown up here across the Mar uh, Mariana Islands northward into the Izu Trench. So that's quite active. Uh, and that activity has stirred up here in the last couple hours or so. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, down here uh, across the eastern Pacific, we're seeing a line of activity from about, uh, remember the Cascadia here, southward into Southern California. A little, little bit of adjustment going on into the Middle America Trench as well. Looks like that. Uh, migration of activities furthering its way down here across the South America region with a handful of earthquakes out there as well. Uh, let's check out the New Zealand area or uh, Iceland. Not for sure why I'm getting that mixed up. That's way opposite sides of the planet. Uh, don't think we've seen any. Well, this was put out. Uh, yeah, this was actually put out here. Today, looks like a little bit later um, information statement here. So let's see what they have. Uh, this, is, again, is from the 18th and 19th. I wish they would show us something new here. Uh, deformation and seismicity continue to decrease while an eruption remain possible. Uh, still mentioning the most likely place would be east of this uh, Slingarfell area, it looks like. Now, that is a region just north of Hagafell, and all these regions that I'm mentioning there are northeast of Grindavik, which is that little town out there. Um, the rate of up uplift uh, near Savart Singhi has been decreasing, but it is still ongoing at a rate of about one centimeter per day. Uh, the majority of the displacement in the region is currently attributed to inflow under Savart Singhi, with a smaller portion flowing into the magmatic intrusion. Uh, in other words, the deformation measured and modeled at Savart Singhi is now much greater than that seen near the magma intrusion, but all deformation signals are slowly diminishing. Uh, dis despite the slowing down of seismic activity and deformation, an eruption is still considered to be possible. And uh, again, east of these, uh, this area here at Slingafell. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. GPS measurements still showing some uptick and uh, uplift here. Uh, let's go check out the earthquake map and see what's going on there for that region of Iceland. Uh, the area that they're discussing here, there's a little small earthquake south of Grindavik out here. Uh, the area that they're kind of discussing is going to be right here, just east of this uh, Slingarfell area, north of Hagafell. This is the most likely area where they're stating that the eruption is going to take place or break through as far as fissures go. That's good news for the folks down in Greenvik, but not over yet. It's not set in stone. Just because they think that it may take place here doesn't mean that it may, may just open up over here across the ocean. Never know. This whole area definitely showing some uplift here, more so towards the north. Uh, but again, you just have to gotta wait and see. Got to find the weakest areas of the crust and uh and then just go from there one little earthquake again that's a little 0.3 showing up well southwest of Grindavik. we'll continue to watch that 33 earthquakes though in the last 12 hours not that big of a deal but again uh we're not out of the woods yet all right storm prediction center uh tomorrow tomorrow we got a big time severe weather day out there in texas uh, with a large population being affected potentially around Houston, Pasadena, College, College Station, uh, in the Woodlands area of Texas. A lot of people out there. The main threat right now looks like it's going to be a pretty significant chance of tornadoes with at least a 10% chance here around Houston. Big time city out there, Pasadena. Uh, but you don't have to be within this 10% zone to get affected by a large tornado. Uh, that covers the 5 and the 2% chance area as well, which is obviously a good portion of southeast Texas. Uh, so if you're out there tomorrow, goodness, tomorrow is what? Uh, yeah, Thursday. I'm sure a lot of people are going to be at work. Uh, just keep your weather radio on. Keep uh, your eyes, maybe keep the TV on for uh, weather reports because it's going to be a severe... Potentially a severe day tomorrow. And again, the main threat, there's not a whole lot of wind or hail. Main threat is going to be the dynamic rotation that these uh, 
uh, thunderstorms and supercells will be able to maintain and uh, produce a, a likely tornado out there. So just uh, be weather aware tomorrow. Uh, numerical models, I wish we could say that we got some big time storms coming out here to the west coast, but we don't. Here's that severe weather potential um, tomorrow in eastern Texas. Definitely going to drop a lot of rain, but the main threat, again, is going to be some rotation out there with those storms. Pacific Northwest is just going to get hammered with some rain, but California, it's almost like there's a blockage going on out here. I don't know what's going on, but it's a, it's a little irritating here. These guys up north are getting... Uh, some big time rain, not a drop here. No, I mean, obviously the extreme northern edge of California, but down here in the Sacramento Valley, look at that. All at least through the middle of December, there's this white gap here. That's nothing, and even this light green is just very, just barely any sprinkles. So this is quite depressing to say the least out here because we should be seeing some rain by now. Uh, a lot of rain heading into the southeast there, quite a bit. That's good for them because I know they've been wanting it. But look at the Pacific Northwest. Goodness, we need to scoot this thing down a little bit. Make some adjustments here on the weather patterns because this is not cool. Let me see what's going on up here. Uh, I want to go back here and upper dynamics. Um, check this out. See what's going on. Well, <clears throat> there's definitely that high pressure ridge out here. You guys see that? That kind of just got bumped from the Gulf of Alaska down into California. That's not cool. Um, and then low pressure back behind that, but it just doesn't have enough strength, it looks like, to completely squash that high. Hopefully this will uh, build up into some rainfall chances, but, uh, oh goodness. I guess we'll have to see how this plays out. Maybe uh, after the 15th of December or so, this is gonna be uh, more of a rainier season. I, I, I was looking at a couple weather models here and most of the El Nino pattern um, models are showing January, February, and March to be significant rainfall above average for the West Coast and Southern California as well. So um, I don't like seeing November dry. I don't like certainly don't like to see December dry because that's a good wet month for us. Uh, but if we can catch up January, February, and March, then hey, that would be good news. But, uh, man, I mean, I'm, it's wintertime. It should be raining here in California. It's supposed to. All right. I'm going to quit uh, my little nagging here, and I'm going to jump off. Have a good day. Um, Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. So tomorrow's Thursday. Goodness. Let me give one more cl uh, quick glance here at the solar space activity again people asking how far they'll be able to see it uh the potential right now it's quiet but roughly tomorrow um we might be able to see it around this line right here where it kind of stretches from about oregon idaho maybe kansas now you'll have to look far on the northern horizon to be able to see it from here but it all depends on how much of a powerful hit we get tomorrow uh, from this, uh, you know, the combination here of a couple different CMEs. I guess we'll cover that more a little bit uh, tomorrow. See how it uh, plays out. All right, folks. Have a good night. Stay safe out there. And uh, we'll catch you guys back here tomorrow morning for Thursday. Take care. <laughs>